Hello and welcome to this uh, video on Fortinet Unified SASE. My name is Ramnath and I'm from Fortinet. Today, I'm super excited to share with you the demo on Fortinet Unified SASE and what it means in terms of use cases. But before we go there, let's go in and see the definition of what really is Fortinet Unified SASE. As you look at the topology here, on your right of your screen, you can see two key elements. The cloud that I'm referring to with 40 SASE is what we provide as a service hosted and managed by Fortinet, the SSC solution. We have 140 plus different POPs around the globe, and we are able to cover all of the geographic locations around the world to support your use case. On the very right, you have the SD-WAN environment. And SD-WAN is something we have done amazingly well over the years, and we are industry leaders in that. Here I have a couple of branches and one data center, to keep it simple. And then within the data center, I have hosted a web server within AWS. As we go along the demo, you'll see what I'm going to do as the remote user tries to access this private application. So what happens when the remote user tries to connect in? The remote user connects to the nearest 40 SASE point of presence, which is referred to as a POP, based on the user's location. So the user is connected to the nearest POP based on latency and geographic location where they are. Once that connection happens, all of the security enforcement happens within that security POP. The traffic can then either go to the internet or it can go out to a SaaS application. So in this demo, I'll cover three key use cases. From a remote user perspective, when the remote user sends a traffic out to the internet, how is that traffic secured? How do you ensure that no malicious hacker can get in into that user's environment or the user's laptop? The next use case is where we are going to secure the user's traffic going out to the private applications. As I mentioned, I do have a web server sitting in public cloud. So I'll ensure how can that traffic from the remote user's perspective goes to that private application, and we are able to insert SD-WAN resiliency for that connection as well. And on top of that, we are able to provide ZTNA, Zero Trust Network Access, where we are able to break the connection if there is anything malicious detected along the way in regards to the user's posture. And last but not least, I'm going to show you some of the capabilities we have around SaaS protection, including DLP and some of our CASB capabilities. So with that, I hope this was informative in terms of the topology. And with that, I'd like to go into the demo. Let's look at what all is available within this 40 client. Now, as you see here, it's managed through the 40 client cloud and it's connected. The remote access shows up, which means that it has SSL VPN connected to the nearest SASE pop. Then as I go into malware protection, you can see multiple different things such as anti-ransomware protection and stuff, along with sandbox detection is available. Then you can see vulnerabilities detected and you can run vulnerability scans based on when you need it, or you can have automatic as well. As I click on my name, I can see the different tags that are associated to my particular device. So in this case, as you see here, the zero trust tags that are attached to me are endpoint compliance, Windows, EDR running, and firewall off. The main thing to note here is that the endpoint compliance is very important because as I have configured a policy which calls out that if this endpoint compliance tag is not available on an endpoint, then this particular user does not have access to my private resources. So that's a policy I've configured, and that's something that will be critical as we proceed further. So this is a unified SASE console where you have different widgets. These widgets will show you the behavior and characteristics of your SASE environment. And that ranges from the number of users, the number of edge devices, what kind of bandwidth and throughput you're looking at from an application perspective. And also you can get a state of health for each one of your SASE pops. As I go into the network and go into the configuration tab and look at the security screen, this is my one-stop shop for all configurations related to SSE in a single place. We have a construct called Profile Group where you can configure multiple different uh, nerd knobs within specific features and then configure and attach that to a specific profile group. Then you can leverage the profile group into your security policies for your customized configurations. As you see here, we have both internet access as well as private access available from a single place. I do know there are a lot of other vendors out there in the space who have different UIs, different consoles to configure internet access as well as private access. And then there are different policies that are required 
running behind the scenes to govern the two. Then as a look at SSL inspection, SSL is available by default as part of the native license. You do not need to purchase any additional license to enable SSL inspection. As I go into the configuration for SSL, you can see we do cert, uh, support both certificate as well as deep inspection. We also provide capabilities around expired certificates, revoked certificates, and we allow customizations to block that as well. On top of that, we also allow exemptions. And this is really important for some of the verticals who are compliance oriented, such as banking or healthcare, where they want some kind of selective means to provide SSL decryption so that the PHI or PI data is not leaked. In that case, for us, we can easily provide means to customize based on exemptions where we can say few host or some of the host or some of the categories where the traffic is going to should not be SSL decrypted. So all of that customizations is natively available with our 4D SASE solution. As seen here, you can see multiple different configuration knobs for antivirus, web filter with inline CASB, IPS, file filtering, DLP, DNS security, as well as inline API CASB. As I look into web filter with inline CASB, you can see there are multiple different web categories that are pre-populated with preset action. So these are preset defaults that are available natively with 4D SASE solution. So today we do support about 95 categories and each one of those categories include hundreds and thousands of URLs within it. As you see here, we have a policy set for social networking and we are set to block. So this is going to be important because I'm going to test this out with a user connected to 4D SASE. On top of that, we also have exceptions. So here you can see I've created an exception for x.com and this exemption is very important because we'll try to see if the user has access to Twitter or not. Now let me go to the endpoint where the 4D client is running and try to test it out and see if this user, Ramnath, has access to social networking sites or not. If yes, and if it's blocked, does he have access to x.com? So let's test it out. So now I'm going into my web browser and typing in www.facebook.com. And I see that I'm blocked, which is expected because I have a policy which calls out all the URLs or all the websites which are under the category for social networking, please go ahead and block it. So it's working fine. That's good to know. Now let's see if the exception is working or not. Now go in and type x.com and then yes, I do see the URLs working and I do have access to x. Now let's see what's happening behind the scenes within logs. So I go into analytics, go into security tab, and then I check my logs. As I go into web filter with inline CASB, a couple of things here, right? One would be the traffic which was allowed and one which was blocked. Let's first see the block traffic for Facebook and see what happened behind the scenes. As you can see here, the security pop for the traffic was San Jose, for the user Ramnath. You can see the URL, facebook.com, and you can see action as blocked. And the reason for blocked is clearly shown here. It says that category description social networking and messages URL belongs to a denied category in policy. So this shows that the URL policy for this is working fine and we are able to block based on the category itself. Now let's look at the traffic which was exempted. As I go and check for pass through action here and then click on details. You can see information on which security pop the traffic went through, what is the URL, uh, it shows us pass through, and here you can see the message. URL was exempted because it is in the URL filter list. So pretty much straightforward from an internet access perspective, and this is just one simple example, but the possibilities are unlimited where you can go in and customize based on whatever you need in the environment. Now that we have looked at securing internet access, let's look at some other use cases. Now I want to ensure what's happening in my endpoint. So I go to my managed endpoints under network tab and let's look at what's happening behind the scenes at my endpoint. So again, this is what the admin remotely is looking outside and in, into my device. So as I see here, I have a desktop IT01. Uh, it's online, it's connected to San Jose Pop. It has a public IP. 
it shows connected and I can see the software OS, which is Windows 10. As I double click on it and go into the details, I get more holistic granular details around that device. I can see whether it's connected to the operating system, what kind of operating system it's on, whether it's online or not, what kind of bandwidth and throughput that I'm seeing at the local device, along with the 4D client version. And this is where I get details around the antivirus version, the signature update that it was done last time, uh, what is the vulnerability scanning, signature version that's up there, anti-ransomware is enabled and installed. And then I can also see sandbox cloud is installed and enabled. So lots of things can be viewed remotely. Then you see here as an admin, I can see what are the vulnerabilities that are running on that user's endpoint. And here you can see there are five vulnerabilities. We can look at severity and then maybe we can then go and probe that user and say, hey user, you need to go and patch this vulnerability with these and these steps. Then you can see the ZDN attacks. And again, this is ZDN attacks that I showed and referenced before from the endpoint. Now I'm seeing this from the 40 SASE console. So these are the same four ZTN attacks which were seen on the endpoint, which are fully dynamic and changes based on the device posture. Now I can look at the install applications. Here you can see all the install applications, third party for shadow IT. So you get a clear picture of what kind of applications this user has installed on his endpoint. The next thing is around hardware. So you get granular details about the state of the hardware. So this is where you get information around CPU, memory, hard disk, and you can get a trending average over time as to how the behavior was over time with regards to the health, the CPU, memory, and disk. Now that we have seen the endpoint in details, let's check out some other use cases. Now I go back to my client and see that these are the four tags that are assigned to my endpoint. Now I'm trying to access a web server which is hosted on AWS. It's a private web server, so it's not publicly accessible. So let's see if I have access to that or not. Yes, I do. So I see the web server is accessible through Northern California AWS data center. So the connectivity is up. So I'm using secure private access, which means that this remote user is connected to the nearest SASE POP. From the POP, there's a connection that goes out to the SD-WAN data center location. And at that location, this web server is located, which is nothing but a public cloud in AWS. This is where I'm going to go in and update the endpoint compliance rule. So if you remember, I mentioned before that endpoint compliance is very critical because as the endpoint doesn't have this endpoint compliance tag, they won't be allowed access to the private application. So let me go in and create a rule saying that if Windows Firewall is turned off, it would not be part of the endpoint compliance. So for it to be part of endpoint compliance, the Windows Firewall needs to be on. Whereas on my endpoint, the Windows Firewall is turned off. So let's see what happens. So I go to my endpoint again. I see that the endpoint compliance tag has gone. So again, this is pretty quick, almost near real time. We keep probing for these posture checks once every minute. And this is really great in terms of the competition uh, where many competitors do it once every five minutes, once every 15 minutes. So we are pretty quick in terms of the way we are able to find out the posture of the device and break that session. So let's see now if this user still has access to that AWS web server. You can see here the sync. It happens once every minute, as I mentioned. So I go back and refresh this link. But now, as you can see, there's no access. So it means that you, because of the posture changing, the user was denied access to this AWS server, which is a private application. So this shows you how we have dynamically provided access to the user based on ZTNet tags. Now, as I go into the endpoint now and try to access a URL, which is for personal usage. So I'm trying to access Microsoft Office with a personal ID. Let's see if I'm allowed. I've configured a rule within 40 SASE, which blocks any 
personal ID usage with corporate app. So here as you see, the user was blocked and denied access to their corporate application when they tried to access using a personal ID. Now as I try to access using my corporate ID, and let me log in. You can see that I got signed in. So this is part of the tenant header support that we have as part of our inline CASB capability. Now let us let me try one thing. So here I am trying to upload files. So I have configured a policy on 4 Sassy which says that for this user Ramnath, this user is allowed to upload files into SharePoint, but this user is not allowed to download. So let's see if that's working or not. So here I go and try to upload a file, a customer stories file, I try to upload, let's see if that works or not. The upload went through fine, that's good. Now let's try to download some other file which is already there on SharePoint. So I try to download, Nothing seems to happen. Let me try another file here. Nothing seems to be happening. Let me try another one. No. Let me check the downloads folder and see if any of those files were downloaded. Uh, nothing. I see the folder is empty. Let me verify something else to see if any download happened. I don't see anything on my browser as well. So it did seem to work fine and the policy is working. Let me go into logs, let me go into security and verify that the policy was working. As I go here, you can see the file download, the Microsoft SharePoint file download was blocked and denied for this user Ramnath. And then you can see the site URL that was accessed along with the SaaS application. So again, this is one example for Microsoft SharePoint, but the same example can be extended to many other well-known SaaS applications that you're using in your environment. The next example here I'm gonna show you here is uh, the usage of ChatGPT. ChatGPT has been prevalent uh, across organizations and a lot of organizations do not want to completely block access to ChatGPT. But one of the main concerns that a lot of organizations have is how do I limit or how do I not allow users to share sensitive data, sensitive information out of the organizations. And that's where DLP becomes really important. So let's see what is possible with 4 Sassy. So here, me as a user, I've tried to go to chatgpt.com and you see that works fine. And now I have a file here which includes PII information, it includes credit card information, the name, address, phone numbers, and all of that. So let me try to copy a few lines from this file. And then I'm trying to paste this into ChatGPT and see if it's allowed. As I try to paste it, you see that no, it's not allowed, it's, it didn't go through. So pretty much 4D Sassy inline was able to look at this and understand that there was sensitive information being sent through ChatGPT and 4D Sassy blocked that connection and blocked that session for the end user. Lastly, in the video demo, I would like to show you the asset map. And this, this gives you a bird's eye view of your entire 4D Sassy architecture and implementation. This gives you information about where your Sassy pops are where your users are and how they're connecting to SASE. I hope this was informative for you and you learned something new about our Fortinet SASE solution. In order to learn something more, I would highly encourage you to go to fortinet.com slash product slash SASE. Thank you so much.